Okay, guys, so this is gonna be episode one of viewers' comments and questions. So I thought I would take the last seven days of questions or comments on the channel and answer them directly. And if need be, actually make a video from the question. So first up is Florian Maurer, uh, 1424 asked, do you have a link to the torque wrench you use? And I will put that below in the description. But the wrenches I use are CDI torque products. I actually have two quarter inch drives. So this one goes from zero to six, and this one goes from zero to 16. So for very small increments, this one, and then this one's will handle pretty much anything on a uh, bicycle, except for some of the um, bolts that go on the suspension and or linkage. So some of those are upwards of uh, 25 Newton meters. And then I also have this monster, big three eights. This goes up to 112 Newton meters or NM. So I will put links down below Florian to all three of those. They're great wrenches. You can get them on Amazon. So the links will be um, below for those. All right, let's see the next, next question. All right, this is uh, from a week ago from Robot Dad. Uh, thank you for the post. I figured I couldn't be that dumb that I couldn't get the wheel back on the bike. I'm still debating on the dumb part, but after watching the video, I was able to put the wheel back on in minutes. My problem, I didn't set the chain to the smallest gear. I really appreciate you saving me $50 and the humiliation of having to take it to a bike shop or ask a neighbor. My wife thinks I'm a man again and I feel better about myself. <laughs> like and subscribe. Um, you're welcome. And yeah, sometimes something as little as not getting your chain in the right place or if your derailleur is out of alignment. So if your derailleur is not all the way down and it's like a few up or at the top, and you try and put the wheel back up in, it's gonna be difficult to mount the chain onto the cogs, onto one of the bigger cogs. So that's why you always wanna shift it all the way down to the bottom, and then put the chain on the smallest cog, pull the wheel up in, and you should be good to go. So anyways, glad, glad I could help. Um, all right, let's look at the next one. All right. Hudson is better asks, what Garmin do you have? The 840? So actually, I have the Garmin Edge 1040. So I run this on all my bikes. I'll show you what it looks like. So what's nice about this computer, I actually just turned it on. So let's see, uh, see what it looks like. So what's nice about this is you've got multiple profiles, so you can run it on gravel bike, road bike, mountain bike, and then it's got a ton of screens. So I don't know if you guys can see that. The brightness is kind of low. Let's see if I can get that brighter. Uh, there we go. All right. So that is a screen, nice and big. It's got tons of different data screens that you can change, manipulate, customize. I'll, on the mountain bike, I'll just have time, speed, and then maybe time of day. And then when I'm riding on my road bike, I'll have time, distance, time of day, power, uh, five second power. And I think that's it. Um, and then on my gravel bike, pretty much same thing, but no power. So. Killer battery life, it's a big screen. If you have crap eyes like me, uh, makes reading your bike computer a lot easier when you're on the road and not having to pull out some reading glasses to, to see how far you've gone or, or, or squint like this to see it. So yeah, Garmin 1040, highly recommend it. Um, automatically uploads to Strava, syncs with your, with your phone. Um, really love their products. I've been using Garmin for, for quite a while. So that is the 1040 and uh, I highly recommend it. All right, let's shut this off. All right, next question is, oh, same, same guy, Hudson is better asks, do you use trail forks on your Garmin or stick to the Garmin topo maps? So I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 
this has trail forks built into it. So what's nice is you can download routes off trail forks directly to this and then use the map to, to find the routes. It will show you the start and the stop and it will actually route you to the trailhead if you're not sure where to go. So depending on where I am, what trails I'm doing and what rides I'm on, um, I'll just use the regular maps. Uh, otherwise, I have loaded and used the trail forks function, which I believe is on the newer garments, um, if I'm not mistaken. So I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's on there. So it's a really, really useful feature. All right. Next question. Uh, Keith Schultz, 9016. You're excellent in your explanation. And I liked especially the use of the dust cap with the tool fitting. So that's, he's talking about the dust caps that have the valve core tool built in. Um, I've got some Envy caps that came with some wheels and they've got the little tool on them. So those are great to use. Uh, I've always got one of the little tool, little plastic tools if I can find one. Um, oh, here's one. So here, this is exactly what he's talking about. Super small. Let me see if this will focus. I'm just gonna hold my hand here. And so it screws onto the valve core on one end and then it has the little tool fitting on the other. So super, again, very, very small. This is my Envy. But it's, what's nice about these is you can just have these directly on your, on your wheel. And then that way, if you ever need to tighten, take your valve core out, it's right there on the bike. So super easy to use. Um, I love these. All right, next one. Next question. Uh, thanks, Mark. I have about 700 miles. Um, my valve cores are bent. Our car, ugh, our core is generic, generic, not genetic. Our core is generic, so I can buy any core. I have a small leak, so it would have to pump after two weeks of not riding. Do I really need to add sealant? I bought my bike five years ago and never added sealant. Okay, so a couple questions here, a couple comments. Um, for the most part, valve cores are generic. Uh, they all look the same. They're all about the same size. What differs is the length of the actual valve stem, but the core that screws into it is pretty much all the same. You can order, order them on Amazon. I've got links down below uh, for the valve cores. Um, so pretty straightforward and they're really cheap. So it should be fairly easy to, to replace. Um, all right. Do I really need to add sealant? Yes. So sealant actually dries up fairly quickly. So I'm in the high mountains, about eight, eight, 8,000, 9,000 feet. And tire sealant dries up. If you're, if you're not riding, it's going to dry up and turn and basically just turn to like, you know, dried glue inside your tire. So in hot weather like this, hot, dry weather, I would change and or check my sealant at least every three months, maybe sooner. Again, depends, depends on how often you're riding. If you are riding consistently, like three to four times a week, then that sealant's gonna constantly be moving and won't have a chance to basically sit and, and dry up from the heat. So yes, check your sealant. If it's been five years, it is for sure dry. And if you get a puncture, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna do anything. I would bet money that it's absolutely dried up and you need to put some in. So that question is going to deserve a video. So I will show you guys next video. I will show you guys how to replace tubeless tire sealant. So whether you're on a gravel bike, road bike, mountain bike, um, all three, you can run tubeless. Uh, this is the sealant I like to use. I call it the orange seal. Um, so. Stuff works great. And I literally have this one's, so this one's been sitting and it's almost like, it's almost dry just from the heat. Yeah, there's, it's pretty much all dried up inside. So even the bottles will dry out. But, so with one of these and a valve core tool, it's, it's pretty quick, pretty easy. So. My next video, which I'll probably shoot tomorrow or the next day, I will show you guys exactly how to either add sealant or put sealant in for the first time on a tubeless tire. So 
you'll know exactly what to do and how to do it. It's fairly easy and can be very um, quick and painless and mess free. So, all right. That is it for questions and comments for the week. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, I will absolutely address them on YouTube. And then we'll do this. Uh, it's Monday right now, Monday night. I'm going to try and get do these every Sunday. and Or film it every, answer the questions every Saturday. Post it every Sunday. And then uh, if need be, maybe do some live, some live Q&As. If any of you guys have questions that need to be answered, we can just do a... a live stream once a week, maybe for an hour or something. Um, anyways, that's it. So go ride your bikes. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, please hit like and subscribe. Totally helps the channel. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot.